For decades, the Philippines was plagued by problems of overpopulation. The more people we had, the more resources we had to allocate, and we had scarce resources. But the country has turned a corner. In 2022, the number of births per woman fell below two for the first time in seven decades. Many of them probably have delayed pregnancy you know, because of their you know, unemployment and their incapacity to provide for the basic services. How did the Philippines go from having one of the highest birth rates in ASEAN to the third lowest? Katulad po ng family planning, ito nga pong uh, method natin. So uh, ito po yung condom, then ito po yung pills. And what could this mean for this nation of 130 million? We're on the track to become a graying demographic like Japan or other countries in the West. And we don't want that. The 109-year-old Dr. Jose Fabila Memorial Hospital is used to being busy. This colonial-era maternity hospital delivers more than 60 births a day, the highest among government-run hospitals in the Philippines. The hospital often exceeds its 408-bed capacity, hence its nickname as Manila's Baby Factory. Na-check up na po kayo ng doktor nyo? Nakita na po kayo. Kailan daw po kayo possible makauwi? Bali, 10 years na po ako dito sa hospital and um, assigned po ako as overall head nurse. Madalas po uh, ang hinahandle ko, minsan nasa 20 to 30 no? sa isang nurse po yun. Pero as per DOH standards po, dapat isang nurse sa limang pasyente lang. It is perhaps fitting that a baby girl born in Fabella was chose to mark the eighth billion person on Earth, a milestone that was reached in November last year. The UN projects that in the next three decades, just eight countries will be responsible for half the world's population growth. The only Southeast Asian nation on that list, the Philippines. Maternity hospitals in the Philippines see 1.7 million births a year on average. And Fabella Hospital, situated in densely populated Manila, is the busiest. Dahil sa uh, government uh, hospital po tayo, marami po tayong pasyente na kinikater, no? So, hindi po talaga naiwasan na isa or dalawa or tatlong nurse sa isang buong ward na rin po. Ang term namin doon is toxic, no? Kasi may times na iba-iba rin yung nangyayari and hindi naman natin yun makokontrol. For decades, the Philippines, a nation of 130 million, has struggled to manage population growth and the associated consequences. In 1969, the Commission on Population and Development, or POPCOM, was established to look at this very issue. The main concern then was the um, pop rapid population growth. If you have more children, you have lesser chance to invest on their well-being and development uh, needs. And rapidly increasing population would again uh, impact on the capacity of the government to provide for their uh, needs. Resources are not infinite, so they feel that you cannot attain. No? It, uh, will, it will be a challenge to attain a certain level of economic development if you're not addressing the population growth. In the 1960s, the Philippines had the highest birth rate in Asia. When POPCOM was established in 1969, the population in the Philippines stood at 36 million. It has since tripled. Compared to other Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, the Philippines has been slow to get a grip of its ballooning population. 
we're uh, twin countries with Thailand because we are on the, almost at the same level demographically and socio-economically at the time in the 60s and uh, 70s. These countries were able to achieve this uh, rapid population decline in such a short period of time and we, we lag behind. But the Philippines is now at a turning point. For the first time in seven decades, the Philippines has recorded a total fertility rate below the replacement rate of 2.1. Total fertility measures the number of births per woman. In 2022, this number plummeted to 1.9. To have an average of 2.1 no, children per woman, it's, uh, it's at the level of population that replaces itself. So, in other words, if you are just replacing uh, the next generation, so there's really no demand for resources no? because you assume that uh, you will have enough and so you have more room to, uh, to develop or to grow. How did the Philippines finally achieve this after half a century? Much of the decline in fertility rate can be traced to one piece of legislation, the controversial Reproductive Health Bill. One of its chief architects is Representative Edsel Lagman. There were many reasons for the enactment of a reproductive health law. One is that we had then a ballooning population which impacts on our uh, poverty alleviation policy. Number two, there was a high rate of maternal and infant mortality, which we had to address. And next, there were many women and couples who were uh, receptive to family planning. But family planning is a difficult topic to broach in the archipelago, where 80% of the population are Catholics. Contraception is against the religion. As a result, when Representative Lagman first proposed to revise reproductive health in 1999, contraceptive prevalence among married women was less than 50%. This compared to over 75% in Thailand. And so, Representative Lagman found strong opposition in many quarters. In the first place, we should uh, consider that uh, uh, talking about uh, sex is taboo in traditional Philippine families. We are a conservative society, and this is compounded by the fact that the overwhelming majority are Catholics. That is why we had a hard time pushing for uh, family planning policies. Among those opposed to the RH bill are pro-life groups which support the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church. What's really happening is you are planting in the hearts of Filipino families, mothers and fathers, even young people, that to have a child, even if it's unplanned, is a bad thing. Every time we say that population is the problem, what we're really saying is we do not value life. For opponents like Nirvana, passage of the RH bill is a slippery slope to something that remains illegal in the Philippines to this day, abortion. And this is what happens historically if you look at the countries that passed a version of RH. They would eventually legalize abortion. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Abortion is murder. It's, it's even worse because you're murdering your own child. And so, with opposition from the church and other quarters, the bill languished in limbo for 13 long years. Let us be true representatives of our people not centurions of established religion. Let us have children by choice, not by chance. I vote yes. But in 2012, after multiple rounds of debate in Congress, 
the Reproductive Health Bill was finally passed. House Bill 4244 is approved on second reading. The opposition to the Reproductive Health Advocacy was tremendous. But it was not insurmountable. This law is really beneficial because it would deplete the population explosion and uh, we will be able to budget our uh, scarce resources for better socio-economic development. The reproductive health law expanded family planning, sex education and maternal care. It also made contraceptives freely available at public health facilities. The fertility rate saw a sharp decline after the passage of the bill. We all also have a declining um, fertility level among adolescents, or yung, what we call adolescent um, uh, pregnancy. So I think um, the reproductive health law significantly contributed to, to, to that, you know, because if you see the trend also in the contraceptive prevalence rate, it's steadily increasing. In the decades since the bill's passage, a generation of young mothers now have better access to family planning resources. Mothers like 35-year-old Mila Rose Jacinto. She takes care of her two kids while working off-site as a quality assurance for an American company. Mi yung panganay po is 9 years old and yung pangalawa po is 2 years old. Bali, kapag marami po kasi, ayun nga po, mahirap tutukan isa-isa. Kaya mas gustoin ko po yung naproan po, napro-provide ko po yung pangangailangan ng mga anak ko. Kapag onti lang sila, mas more on napro-provide po sila. More and more women have stories like Mila Rose. In the Philippines, about one in five women want to delay their next child by more than two years. This trend reflects how Filipino mothers are now empowered in their reproductive choices. Bali, mga kaibigan ko po nung high school, ayun po, onti lang po yung anak nila, dalawa, isa, yun lang po. Sa hirap ng buhay po ngayon, um, kailangan po maging practical po tayo na kung, kung ilan lang po yung kaya nating anak ang matutustasan po natin. But why has the Philippines made lowering birth rates a national priority? The answer lies in the consequences of overpopulation, evident in many parts of the country. Twenty-four-year-old Chari Depositor lives in Talak, a city two hours north of Manila. She used to work in retail, but was among those laid off by the onset of the pandemic. Chari hopes to land a job in the Philippine capital, but after sending out applications to more than 10 employers, she's struck out so far. Sa kasalukuyan po, yung uh, trabaho po dito sa Tarlac is limited lang po. Saka po, uh, yung trabaho po dito, um, hindi po ganun karami sa Manila na saka po yung pasahod po niya is mas mataas po kasi sa Manila kasi po dito. Like moths drawn to bright lights, thousands from the rural regions flock to Metro Manila in search of opportunities each year. As a result, the capital has become one of the most densely populated cities in the world. Siguro po, pag natanggap po ako sa Maynila, pag nag-apply po ako ng trabaho, siguro yung magiging buhay ko po is, uh, yun, makikisabay po ako sa siksika ng jeep, pagka-uwi, uh, hirap sa biyahe, hirap sa paghanap ng mga sasakyan, sa siksika ng mga tao. Sobrang hirap po talaga sa Maynila, unlike po sa probinsya. Kaso nga lang po, sa Maynila po kasi yung maraming trabaho po. Sa Manila ka po makakahanap ng talagang... Bustling streets and crowded neighborhoods. Here in Metro Manila, 14 million people are cramped 
into about 630 square kilometers, an area less than the size of Singapore. Nowhere else in the Philippines is the picture of unfettered population growth and overcrowding so soberingly clear. The urbanization problem remains a pressing population and development concern no? because right now in the Philippines we have a 52% uh, urbanization rate, no? meaning 50, around uh, more than 50% of uh, the Filipinos are living in the urban areas and that's actually an increase you know, in, in from the 2015 level which is around 49%. You crowd the city. You will have to share a lot of resources no, in the city. So it can also be that you, know, you may displace others. So that's why we have urban slums, for example, because we don't have enough facilities for housing. We have traffic because there's just too many of us in the cities. For many years, GDP growth of the Philippines lagged behind its ASEAN neighbors, all while contending with one of the highest population growth. With so many jostling for a limited share of the pie, the country now has a high underemployment rate. Around 14% of workers take jobs below their qualifications. Sa ngayon po, sir, yung mga kaibigan ko pong nakakausap ko, uh, meron, may, yung sa kaibigan ko po, sa mall po sila nagtatrabaho po, sir. Uh, merchandiser po sila sa isang Gaisano Mall, sa Unitap, ganun po. Uh, pero yung mga natapos po nila is uh, bird passer po sila ng teacher, engineer, ganun po. Uh, dahil sa hirap mag-apply, mahirap mag-apply at mahirap maghanap ng trabaho, uh, kaya po napupunta po sila sa ganung position po. The situation in Manila demonstrates the urgency of addressing population growth. And in the heart of the city, one place stands as a grim reminder of overpopulation. The Manila City Jail, one of the most crowded incarceration facilities in the world. Built to house 1,100 prisoners, it is now bursting at the seams with 6,000 inmates. Dito, sila nag stay tulad yan. Nagkakaroon sila ng panunod ng television. Ayan. Uh, dito sila nagkakaroon ng uh, pagkakataong mag-usap-usap, uh, magkwentuhan. Natutulog sila tabi-tabi dito, dito rin. Uh, kung hindi sila kasya doon sa kanilang mga, kanil -kanilang mga higaan o mga kung tawagin natin kubol, uh, yung iba dito na rin na natutulog. Ginagamit nila itong tulugan. Yung ganitong lugar, madalas talaga magkahawahan. Lalo na kung pagdating sa... TV. While the crime rate in Manila has come down since President Duterte's term, it remains relatively high. The root of this can be traced to the population boom in the city. When you have many people in one place trying to compete for resources, then there will be a scarcity of resources. When this happens, then the likelihood of criminality will also emerge because there is a struggle to compete for those resources. The more people that are concentrated in one area, then the likelihood that there will be more crimes. Dahil sa paglaki ng populasyon ng Pilipinas, karamihan eh nahihirapang maghanap ng mga trabaho. So yung iba, Dahil sa kahirapan ng paghanap ng trabaho, nasasadlak sila doon sa mga illegal mga aktividad. Sikapin mo na makakuha ng plema para masuri natin. Ha? In these cramped quarters where diseases spread easily, Dr. Henry Fabro is the only physician. He looks after at least 40 city jails in Metro Manila and the surrounding provinces. That is, one doctor for 35,000 inmates. Today at the Manila City Jail, he attends to patients with tuberculosis. The workload with regards to the health service personnel here is really, you know, it's really heavy, meaning it's very, very busy. 
there's no uh, there's no idle time. Every minute counts. No? Because again, of the sheer number of uh, PDLs that we have here, uh, it's not only me who has a heavy load with regards to work, especially the nurses, because uh, they are the ones who are continuously with the PDLs. They are the ones who are uh, continuously caring for the PDLs. With regards naman sa amin, mga doktor, sa akin, uh, medyo busy din. It's, it's a bit toxic because uh, I have to go around different jails. While the situation in prison is extreme, it reflects the scarcity of medical resources in wider society. During COVID, the Department of Health estimates the Philippines face a shortage of almost 100,000 physicians. The University of Philippines reports that there are 3.7 doctors per 10,000 people, much lower than a WHO guideline of 10 doctors per 10,000. Let's face it, the opportunities being offered abroad, both educational and financial, is a lot greater. It's not a shortage of doctors. It's a shortage of opportunity, both educational and financial, for the doctors to stay. Even the nurses, it's all over the news. If you can make the nurses stay in the Philippines, it would be good for the healthcare system of the Philippines. Apart from public health, overcrowding puts people at risk in other ways. Manila is one of the most vulnerable cities to climate change. Greenpeace estimates that floods and sea level rise could displace millions in the city by 2030 and cost billions in economic value. We have the metropolis, uh, the greater Metro Manila. It's, it's too overcrowded. It will really be very difficult to, to manage because the planning is, is not as good as if the populations are, are much less. And when the floods come in, all of those people will be exposed. And also, with respect to climate change adaptation, uh, planning of communities, what we will do to become resilient against the adverse impacts of climate change, it will be more difficult to do. Ironically, unfettered population growth could exacerbate the problem. And uh, as we know, because of growing populations and highly urbanized areas, there's a lot more energy demand. And if there's a lot of energy demand, our traditional way of producing energy really is from burning fossil fuels. So that has a correlation with climate change because that's the primary uh, energy source for the Philippines. While a slower population growth gives the cities and municipalities more room to maneuver, the numbers alone do not tell the full picture. How does inequality affect the fertility rate among Filipinos? After a hard-fought battle to pass a law focused on reproductive health, the fertility rate in the Philippines has fallen below two for the first time in seven decades. The focus has shifted from quantity to quality. We have uh, decelerated the population growth rate as an option for women and couples to really determine the timing and size of their families because the more people we have due to our scarce resources definitely poverty cannot be solved as long as we are able to implement faithfully and fully the reproductive health law then the fertility rate will be maintained or even go down a little bit it uh, provides opportunity for couples individuals to have more opportunity for uh, an investment and for the well-being of their members of the family. So having lesser children, uh, they, they have more savings and investment in the income. With better access to family planning, 
the average number of children per household shrank from 6.8 in 1968 to around two presently, a sign of changing attitudes among younger mothers. Bali po ang grandparents ko po, sa mother side ko po, um, saan po ang anak po nila. Sa father side ko po is anim po. And then sa mama gulang ko po, mga kapatid ko po, apat po kami. Kasi po, nung mga bata po kami, um, mahirap po yung buhay. Um, hindi po sa amin nabibigay lahat ko ano man ang gusto. Kaya mas ginusto po namin na mas onti lang po yung anak namin. Para na po provide po sila kung ano po yung pangangailangan nila, nabibigay ko ano man yung gusto po nila. But an examination of the fertility numbers reveals a more nuanced picture. The current fertility rate of 1.9 is an aggregate. Once broken down, it reveals that fertility is lower among urban women, while rural areas were associated with high birth rates. That's always the trend. No? Women in urban areas tend to have uh, lower fertility compared to rural. Being in the urban area would mean that you are likely to be employed, no? or you're likely to be of higher education. No? You're likely to belong to a household in a higher socioeconomic uh, status. No? And that's why you, know, you need to have equitable development. So you need to provide opportunities for your women in uh, rural areas. So that means that, okay, send them to school, no? Make education accessible to your women so they're not limited to being mothers and housewives. Even in urban centers, there is a disparity among the rich and the poor. Aroma Compound in Tondo is one of the slum communities in Manila. It's difficult to say how many people live in these unauthorized settlements. The residents here are largely migrants from the rural provinces. For Marites, who left a provincial birthplace of Samar Island in Western Philippines, Manila represented a ray of hope. But the harsh reality of urban life greeted her and her husband when they moved to Aroma Compound three decades ago. She soon found her 25 square meter makeshift home filled with her kids and grandkids. Dose po, dalawa po yung patay. Bali, sampu po yung buhay ngayon. Ang babae ko po, anim. Tapos ang lalaki ko, apat. Bali ang may anak sa akin, yung tatlo kong babae. Medyo masip kasi, ani. Mga lumalaki na sila eh. Kaya kailangan medyo maano na, maluwag ang hinihigaan. Minsan po, nagkakapalit-palit yung ano nila. Katulad kangina, yung natatawag ko, yung Jomar, imbis na yung JR. Kaya nag nagkakapalit-palit sila ng mga pangapangalan nila. Kasi madami. Marites does odd jobs in the neighborhood while her husband ferries passengers in a trisho. But with a meager household income of 9,000 pesos or 170 US dollars, Stretching their monthly budget for food, utilities, transportation, and education is a challenge. Sa sobrang, ano eh, sobrang dami mo nang inaalagaan eh. Tapos, ano, pakapos pa. Mahirap po kasi, lalo na pagkapos sa Penaysia, lalo na pag malit ang kita. Magkahagilap ka talaga ng panggastos para mapagkasya mo sa pang-araw-araw. But despite the tough conditions, there are still more opportunities here than in the provinces. Ang ano ko na lang mas gusto ko na lang dito kasi dito umikot ka lang dito kikita ka ni. Eh. Pag sa probinsya ka, magsasaka ka pa. Magtatanim ka pa. Mahabang proseso, mahabang proseso pa ang gagawin mo para kumita ka. Urban areas are getting richer and rural areas are getting poorer. So the, the, the socioeconomic conditions in the uh, rural areas are getting worse. So 
of course, it affects the well-being of, of families in those uh, localities. While, of course, in the, the urban areas, they continue to experience um, the, or, the different uh, the perennial urban uh, problems. So we cannot address urbanization uh, problems if we don't um, uh, put that in the context also of uh, rural um, uh, development. Former President Rodrigo Duterte believed overpopulation was the biggest threat to social economic progress. During his term, he sought to address the rural-urban divide by expanding access to contraception. His goal was to have zero unmet needs for modern family planning among poor families. So the strategy now is to, one, to ensure that women who have still high fertility able ano, to access family planning services, and they are uh, those who belong to poor families and those who have um, poor socioeconomic um, uh, conditions. So population programs should become part, of course, of uh, socioeconomic uh, strategies that are implemented not only at the national level, but more importantly at the regional level. In terms of uh, considering that women in the rural area are likely to be uh, less educated, so maybe in terms of access to information and services uh, of family planning is limited compared to urban areas. So then maybe to have a more targeted uh, program no, to make family planning uh, services or, health, or reproductive health services more accessible to uh, rural women, no, women in the rural areas. Marites has seen family planning initiatives in her neighborhood, but reception is lukewarm. May mga nag-iikot naman po sa amin ng mga health worker dito sa lugar namin. Yung iba ayaw nila, lalo na kapag pinupuntahan sila ng mga tagalikhaan, yung iba hindi naman sumasama para mag-ano ng mga injectable, saka pills, tapos implant. And when COVID struck, the need to address this disparity became even starker. About 4 million people were pushed into poverty in the first year and a half of the pandemic. Poor families were 1.7 times more likely to become food insecure compared to middle-income households, a problem compounded when there were more mouths to feed. kasagsagan po ng ano, pandemic, Hindi ganong nakakalabas yung mga bata, lalo na yung batang nangangalakal. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-ikot-ikot. Ang mga anak ko, kahit hindi po sila nakakapasok, nagtitinda-tinda kami ng bagong. Kaya nakakaraos din kami sa pang-araw-araw. Ano, doon po yung mapit ako sa ano, utang. Kasi para makatawid sa pang-araw-araw. Nag-aalala ako para sa mga anak ko. Ganun din, kasi sa mga apo ko naman, ano pa sila eh. Maliliit pa sila eh. For Marites, her hope is that the hardships she faced raising a big family will not be visited on the next generation. Minsan yun, sa yun nga, yun sa Pinay siya, yung kapos. Lalo na pag magsasabay-sabay, magkakaroon ng mga karamdaman. Yun ang iniisip ko lagi sa mga apo ko at sa anak ko. Sa hirap talaga ng buhay ngayon, kailangan talaga kung mag-ano ka ng pamilya, kailangan dalawa lang o kaya isa kasi pag madami, mahirap. The trend would continue if you if the government fail to realize that, you know, fertility behavior of women in urban and rural areas differ. So we, we will continue to, to have this trend, to have this gap no? that will put women in the rural area at the disadvantage. So uh, what needs to be done, it's really to make development equitable. No? So provide education and economic opportunities to your women, no? particularly in the rural areas, to close that gap. The question now, is whether the new population reality is here to stay and how this could impact the Philippines.
For two years, Joanna Gamboa and other volunteers have visited the indigenous community of Aitas in the province of Zambales. Nandito po tayo sa sitio Jesmag para po magbigay ng kaukulang impormasyon para sa paggamit ng family planning. The Aitas do not believe in contraception and have strong beliefs against family planning. Something Joanna and her team are trying to change. Mga ano lang sila, mga traditional sila, katulad ng mga withdrawal, ganyan, kasi wala nga silang alam. Ni-explain po namin sa kanila yung mga, ano, mga dapat at hindi dapat sa mga ganitong bagay. Katulad po ng family planning, ito nga pong uh, method natin. So, uh, ito po yung condom, then ito po yung pills. Nahihiya po sila sa mga, sa ganyan. Pero, ipinapaliwanag po namin na okay lang po yan, kasi para sa inyo yan. Ang family planning po ay ligtas, mabisa, maaasahan ang mga pamamaraan ng family planning. Joanna is part of a group called Force of Community Volunteerism and Reform to educate rural communities on reproductive health. In her short time here, she has seen the changes in the Aita community's attitudes and perceptions. The demand for contraceptives had risen as they saw family planning in a positive light. Masaya po ako na naisishare ko yung karunungan o yung alam ko na para sa kanila. At ako din po, masaya rin ako na mas naibibigay ko yung uh, kaalaman na naiintindihan ko. Kasi mas naiintindihan ko, kaya ibinibigay ko sa kanila na gusto ko maintindihan din nila. Ito po ito araw-araw, so dapat po hindi tayo pumapalya pag umiinom nito. Pag nag-start po kayo, Sex education and family planning in rural communities will be important tools to address another challenge, teenage pregnancies. The Philippines has one of the highest rates of teenage pregnancy in ASEAN. The UN estimates that 500 girls between the ages of 15 and 19 give birth each day, a problem that is more pronounced in rural communities. We all know the recent vulnerabilities of being adolescent mothers, no? so we have health, even mortality. Uh, we have a very a poor socioeconomic condition resulting to intergenerational poverty among those who are um, uh, affected. No? So it's uh, actually, um, it has a lot of implication in terms of the well-being of the adolescent or adolescent girls no? if, if a teenage pregnancy is not addressed. Teen pregnancy is declining from 13% in 2013 to about 6.8 or 7% now. But having said that, it doesn't mean that you know the problem has been solved. It's still there. The point is we're also seeing that it's not just those 15 to 19 who are getting pregnant, but we also see girls 10 as early as 10 or 10 to 14 who are already experiencing pregnancy. It's a social problem, no? Because our teenagers, they're not supposed to get pregnant at that age because they're just kids. For Representative Edsel Lagman, teenage pregnancy is one of the remaining gaps in the reproductive health bill. Before the enactment of the reproductive health law, there were very few, if ever, policies on sexuality education. But uh, under the reproductive health law, we have mandated the Department of Education to establish a curriculum for all schools without distinction, which are age appropriate. But unfortunately, this is one of the graveyards of the implementation by the reproductive health law, because until now, the Department of Education has not fully started the nationwide uh, implementation of reproductive health and sexuality education. But despite the challenges that remain, it is undeniable that the Philippines has made great strides moving the needle on birth rates. In fact, the sharp decline of the fertility rate to 1.9 last year from 2.7 just five years ago has surprised many. But why did it fall so quickly? It was sudden. 
No, that's why uh, we call it a puzzle. <laughs> so, and uh, it's too early yet, no, to uh, to to say what caused it, no. So now we're saying that, okay, maybe it's really because of the pandemic, but aside from that, we have already seen that, that the trend is declining, but not too fast. During the pandemic, we were expecting that um, higher fertility uh, would happen uh, because of uh, you know, lower access of couples and individuals to family planning services due to the um, restrictions in, in public health facilities. And, uh, of course, in the mobility of, of couples, no, of, of clients, especially in the urban and, and rural areas. But to our surprise, we have realized a different you know, um, a, a result. I'd like to believe you know, that uh, women, and uh, even men, you know, and, and then the, the, the couple, <laughs> both couples have become more conservative about having uh, additional or, or more children because perhaps of the difficult socioeconomic condition that they have during the, the pandemic. No, so many of them probably have delayed uh, pregnancy you know, because of their you know, unemployment and in their incapacity to provide for the basic services. With the pandemic all but over, how this can be sustained will be the next piece of the Philippines' population puzzle. Well, our challenges now would be one, to maintain the low fertility rate we have achieved or even make it better. Uh, number two, to fully uh, give our women uh, access to reproductive health services. We are conducting a study on the factors that contributed to the decline of population in the country, especially during the, the um, uh, pandemic. But it might, it might rebound no, if family planning services are not sustained. If you also look at experience of other countries who have already reached below repla or replacement fertility, they will not go back. The probability of it increasing and going back to a higher level, it's quite slim. Maybe it will not go back to a pre-pandemic level, but it will uh, slightly increase, maybe reach replacement fertility, but I don't think it will really increase that much. And then there are those who worry that the country is now on a dangerous trajectory towards the irreversible path of an aging population. We're at 1.9, and we're on the track to become a graying demographic like Japan or other countries in the West. And we don't want that. In Japan, where it's a full-blown demographic winter, meaning it's a largely graying population, where on any given day in a convenience store, there will be more adult diapers sold than baby diapers. So what does that mean? What's the implication? It means that the social system is not strong enough to support the older people. And this is the fruit of the contraceptive mentality at its extreme. And we don't even really need to go there to see how bad it will affect the, the Philippines in the future. But in the end, perhaps there is one thing that both sides can agree on. After five decades of stop-starts on family planning, the slower population growth has finally given the Philippines a head of steam in economic development without the shackles of overpopulation. There's what we call a window of opportunity. You have a bonus, no? a demographic bonus or a demographic dividend because your workforce will increase. But of course, you can only have a bonus if you invest. <laughs> so meaning your population, the young, should be educated, should be healthy, and that you provide opportunity for, for them, for employment, that they will be productive. Now that we have some form of edge, the Philippines should actually work on development programs like in agriculture, in industry, in improving education, in improving real authentic maternal health and not equating maternal health with access to contraception. I think we have a very sound economic fundamentals to be able for us to achieve the goal of the government, especially the current administration for economic recovery.
and uh, this is facilitated by its current demographic uh, uh, scenario. No? So I think uh, we are in a better position to catch up with our other neighbor countries in the Southeast Asia.